Hi, it's Cassie Viella with Feral Creatures Homestead, and today we're talking tomatoes. Now, as you can see behind me, these guys right here are the tomatoes that I planted this spring. Um, those wooden posts that are holding the trellis up are eight feet tall. So my tomato plants are 10, 11, 12 feet tall at this point, but it's the end of July. The season's pretty much over. They are getting very sick, you know, they're not really producing a ton of flowers or fruit anymore. And so at this point, I could just rip them out and um, plant something else there. Um, but luckily in Texas, we kind of have this in-between season. We've got the spring season and the winter season, um, but we've also got kind of an in-between, like late summer, early fall season that's kind of a strange mix. But what I like to do, or what I'd like to try this year, is I wanna take the tops off of these tomato plants and then root them either in water or in potting soil and then plant those so that hopefully I can clone the tomato plant and get a new crop of tomatoes right before the really cold weather hits us here in San Antonio. So that's my goal. My goal is to plant another round of tomatoes um, starting here, it's the last week of July. So starting last week of July, get another round of tomatoes in um, and then raise them through the fall and hopefully get tomatoes. Um, another thing, so I know that this works, um, because I've kind of done it already. Not only am I gonna use these um, to get a second tomato crop this season, but you can also use this method when the cutworms do their worst, even if it's early in the season. So let let me show you an example of that. All right, so when you clone tomatoes, you can either do it like I was talking about between seasons. So if this has happened to you, which if you've been gardening and growing tomatoes, it's eventually going to happen to you, but I walked out um, towards the beginning of the season, like in April, and um, I had planted all of my transplants and had, you know, they were doing great. I was so excited. They were all taking just fine. And then I walked out one day and I had two tomato plants that were just sitting there, you know, chopped off at the dirt, laying there dead. And so, you know what that means? That's cutworms. Just the devil, the, the worst, because it's so devastating. She had this healthy plant and then they just come along and just essentially chop it down. So I was so distraught. Um, they were maybe about 18 inches high, so they were pretty good little plants already. Uh, but I just took them and I stuck them in a jar of water um, as soon as I found them. And then I let them sit in the water for a couple of days and then I potted them. And so I potted one in this pot. This is one of them. I have not done what I'm supposed to because look, it's grown out of the pot. Um, I should have put it in the ground at some point. But just so you can see, I mean, this was essentially a goner because the cutworms had taken it out and it's still growing fruit. Um, and obviously it's grown into this pretty large plant, probably about three feet high. So it's not as large as the other tomatoes in the garden. It's not as large as its, I don't know, sisters, um, but it's not a, a totally wasted tomato plant. I have harvested tomatoes from it. Um, and so if you walk outside, you see cutworms have destroyed one of your plants, um, your tomato plants specifically, then you can try this method to try to save that progress that you had going with that tomato plant. Cause it is just, soul crushing to throw a plant away um, because a cutworm took it out. So what I'm gonna do first here is I am going to cut off the tops of the tomato plants. Now, you would not wanna do this earlier in the season because when you cut the top off the tomato plant, it's, it's not gonna grow anymore. It's not gonna grow any higher. Um, some of the suckers might grow, but that main, um, it's not a trunk, but the main trunk of the tomato plant um, you want to make sure you don't cut that off um, until until it's completely done doing what it's going to do. But I think we're done. I think we, you know, we're reaching the end of what these plants can do. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, take the tops off. I'm going to cut about um, a foot to 18 inches and um, and then stick them in some water. I'm going to run an experiment here uh, with you guys. So the ones that I saved from the cutworms, I actually stuck in a jar of water and root stimulator first 
uh, for two days and then stuck them in the potting soil mix. Um, and they both did really well. So I'm gonna do that again, but I also thought I would stick a few straight in the potting soil and just kind of see if there's a difference, if there's anything that I notice, um, because you know that putting them in the water for one step, that might be a waste of my time. So I wanna know that. So we're gonna run a little experiment and um, all of the plants are gonna have, you know, I'm I have the yellow pear tomato, I'm gonna put one in the water and one in the soil. So uh, let me get busy with that and uh, let's keep going. Okay, so we have taken the tops and some of the suckers off of our huge tomato plants and I stuck them all in water. Um, but I'm going to take, like I said, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna put half in soil, half in water and see which works better. So these here are my black crim variety. Oh my gosh, this tomato is delicious. It's it's like purplish and really meaty and just delicious. I can't even describe it. It didn't produce as many tomatoes as some of my other plants, um, but the ones it did produce were so, so good. So I've decided that this is one of the varieties I'd like to keep. So I'm gonna just fill my pot with soil here and I'm gonna shove that down there pretty far because the tomato plant, um, it'll grow roots all along the stem. If you've ever seen, I'm kind of looking to see if I have any that have them. If you've ever seen bumps along the stem of your tomato, that's when it's trying to grow roots out of its stem. A tomato actually grows along the ground and constantly grows roots down. So we can cover as much of the stem as we want and we're gonna get roots everywhere along that stem. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of it down into the soil fill this up to the top. Now, what I'm filling this with is a mixture of potting soil, compost, and I threw in some phosphate uh, just because they, you know, they are tomato plants. So we're gonna have a lot of phosphorus. And so that's it, voila, got one there. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. Again, just kind of throw some dirt in there and shove it down. You know, something. sometimes when you're propagating things, you have to be super gentle. Tomatoes, you know, they're really tough. Throw them in there, they'll be fine. All right, so that's what we've got. I'm gonna water these in and then I'm going to set, so like here I've got my experiment, pot versus water. I'm gonna set these out. After a couple of days, I'm gonna put the ones in the water into pots. Um, I might leave one in the water just to kind of show you those bumps that I'm talking about. If I remember to do that, I'll put a little clip here. And then um, we'll see how they do. Hopefully uh, it'll be a success like the ones that my cutworms cut down earlier this year. And we'll be eating tomatoes again in the fall. So I hope that that was useful to you. Um, I'll show you the results uh, probably later this season in a different video. Um, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and look at the homesteading videos playlist on my channel. Um, I have more there just kind of following the journey of building our urban homestead.